Well, hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, wait, what the heck? I am apparently some kind of furry animal. That's weird. Just kidding, of course. Ha 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 ha. Um, I'm trying something new, what some people call a VTuber, which is weird. Just this one time means I didn't have to set up my green screen today. And I thought it was kind of thematic for trying out four tails, which we're going to do now. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. I hope you'll be able to hear the game okay. If anyone is in chat, please let me know. And uh, we will go from there. So let us get things rolling here. Um, in Four Tales, we play as this little guy over here, whose name is Volpe. He is a... You know what? I can't remember what kind of... He's not a magpie. He's some other kind of bird. I'm sure we'll find out during the game. What Four Tales is, is a card game that tells a narrative story. You have to make some choices about how you're going to approach certain situations, whether they be uh, things like, uh, do you buy food or do you try and steal food? Do you engage in combat or do you try and find another way around combat? Um, but let's give it a try. We're going to start a brand new save. I've only played about five minutes of this game uh, total. Um, also, if the thing blinks weird, I, I'm still setting it up and getting the lip, lip syncing correct is also another challenge so um, I think it's cute though so I hope you guys do uh, so let's start a new game right there okay so that's the only choice we can make a mysterious patron Volpan needs money to help his father and the local miners his friend Leo says there's someone in town with a very lucrative job offer Welcome to Four Tales, an adventure game where you progress by combining cards and exploring decks. This is it, Volpan, our ticket to the easy life. That's his friend, Leo. One last job, and our days of stealing apples from the market are behind us. That's what you said the last time, so who is this contact of yours? His name's Timothy. He says he has work for people like us. What does that mean exactly? And you're sure he can pay? Because I could really do with the money right now. Don't worry, he promised a hefty reward. Should be more than enough to help your father and the miners with their strike. And for me to take an early retirement. He's just a little difficult to track down in town sometimes. We better ask around then. He looks like a good place to start. Okay. Good day to you, young bird. Let's turn the music down just a bit. It seems kind of loud, doesn't it? Uh, let's go down there. There. So this is the beggar. Good day to you, young bird. How can I be of assistance? We're looking for someone by the name of Timothy. Ah, I see, I see. A very secretive fellow is he. I think I heard something about him the other day, but sadly my memory isn't what it once was. Right, and what might jog your memory, I wonder? A bite to eat usually does the trick. About five food should be sufficient. Five food? That's enough to last a few days. Ignore my friend here, we'll come back with some food for you. We already have one food, just four to go. A typical region of the game is composed of three to six location cards placed on the board. You can learn more by hovering your cursor over a card. Sometimes clicking on cards will also trigger dialogue or a reaction from your characters. Try it out for yourself. Click on the left card with the beggar. He will remind you of what he wants. Would you spare a morsel of food for an old beggar? I wouldn't call five food a morsel. This is demanding work for an old man like me. I'd like to see you try it. Yeah, yeah. You'll get your food, all right. We have two types of action cards at our disposal. Skill cards, that would be the ones over here, of your adventurers. And consumable cards, which are the ones over here. So I guess because we have Volpan and Leo, 
Uh, you can tell they're different types of cards, so they seem to currently have three of each. Targets will often be location cards, but not always. When you hover over one of your cards, the possible targets are highlighted, along with hints as to what will happen if you play there. So pay attention to what is highlighted and where the hints appear. Conversely, if you place your cursor over elements of the board, it will highlight the action cards you can play there. Take a moment to explore your current cards and see if you can figure out a way to find enough food to proceed. So here we have the marketplace. The sights, sounds, and smells of city life intermingle in this bustling hub of commerce. A great place to trade car uh, goods, excuse me. And it's highlighting some of our skill cards down in the left and one of the action cards. So this action card is money, so two fortune. Makes kings of men, buys forgiveness for lost souls, and can even start a war or two. Can also be used to buy apples. <laughs> So it's telling us that uh, if we hover over, if we look at the middle card, which was the marketplace, we'd lose one money and gain two food and move through that area. And if we do the one on the right, which is the apple merchant, he would take two money and give us two food. So right there, you can see that using the money, we'd be better off going with the one on the right, the apple merchant here. Um, but we have other options. So, for example, with the Apple Merchant, we can use one of our Fame cards because I guess he's heard of us. So we would lose this card completely and gain two apples. Um, we can do a few things with our skills. So a Rallying Cry, uh, we would gain a Fame, but we would lose the Marketplace and move to the next location, and we wouldn't do anything to the Apple Merchant. Taking a shot <laughs> at the Apple Merchant would gain us four food, one money one card i believe or no one death card so we'd have we'd we'd be in trouble and we'd have a battle although it looks like volpin our little bird guy has a skill called nimble hands when you're born with nothing you have to steal what you can to survive if you're lucky you'll survive long enough to eat pretty good at it so we can, no, it's telling us if we use his uh, nimble hands on the marketplace, we'll gain two food, but we're going to have a search party of one start looking for us because we've been spotted. Um, whereas if we use it on the apple merchant, it looks like we're going to get away from it. So I would think that that's what we're going to do. So let's take that cart. There's three food and move to the next location. And there we go. Smooth. He didn't notice a thing. I'll take that to go, please. Okay, so we have a new location. Oh, one very important rule to remember, you can only play one card per location on the board. Sometimes it will transform from the target card into another location card, but most of the time it will just consume it and travel to the next card. A standard used card from the board will go back to the bottom of the exploration deck. And once a slot is available, it will automatically be filled with the top card from the exploration deck. You can't run out of location cards to explore because the exploration deck always cycles. Knowing me, I'm going to get well lost at one point and we'll just end up going through the same locations over and over. <laughs> All right, so we still have the marketplace. Although we have our four food. Um, we need five food, though, don't we? We need one more food. Yeah, same thing. Five food. So I'm showing that we have four. So we need a few more. Um, rallying cry. That's not going to give us any food. That's not going to give us any food. It looks like none of these. I mean, I guess I could... I could steal another one. <laughs> We're going to start a search party. That's for sure. Um, anything we can do here. Why don't we buy one more food from the marketplace? We'll lose one of our money, but we'll get two more food. Maybe just dust the dirt off that. There we go. Okay, I think we've got enough now. Let's see what this guy knows. Lead the way. There's a new location, which is the old well. We don't need to go there. Well, good place to refresh oneself or make a quick wish. Let's use our food on the beggar. He's going to take five of them, and it looks like advance the quest, which is the middle symbol there, a story effect, and move to the next location. 
Oh, thank you, young bird. Now about this Timothy chap. But of course, where are my manners? Here, follow this path. That should show the way. Very generous of you. Thanks for the tip, friend. A good day to you, bird. Well, what now? I suppose we should follow the old beggar's directions of that on that piece of paper. Sometimes you have to seek directions to progress in the story and reach new destinations. Check the descriptions on your cards. That piece of paper. Yes, that one. Something told Vopan that these chaps weren't here to talk. Uh oh. Beware, a hostile token is blocking this card. You won't be able to play any cards on the suspicious street until you get rid of those bandits. If you click on the token, you can see the creatures form in the group and decide whether to engage or not. Most confrontations start with a negotiation phase. If you have the correct resources, you might be able to discard this threat without any violence. But if you don't absolutely need to play a card here, you may as well avoid any conflict and play on the other cards available. I don't know if that's giving us a hint or what. Um... Directions to Timothy. The old beggar has marked the map with Timothy's location. All Volpan needs to do is find the nearest marketplace and follow the directions from there. Now, we were on the marketplace before. We are no longer on the marketplace now. That's a suspicious street, but we're looking for the marketplace. So, rally and cry isn't going to do us much. It'll change the location, so that's always an option. Survivor sense. There's food everywhere if you know where to look. So again, that would find us some food, and on the middle one, find us some food and some money, and we'll travel through, but I don't think that cycles through the location. I'm not sure about that, actually. Uh, solidarity solidarity for, of the weak. The poor, the weak, and the needy must stick together to survive. Volpan can inspire compassion to attract potential ally. Well, there's no one there, so that seems like it would be a waste. A diversion, no good. And nimble hands again. So I think um, we're going to do this survivor sense and see, it, see if it moves us through a scene to open another scene. Let's try that. And we're going to gain one food. We're going to gain one gold and we'll move to the next location. This looks like a good spot to refill our canteens. All right. My wish came true. And we get a noisy tavern, the perfect place to get some rest and recruit fellow adventurers. Stay a while, listen closely, and you might just hear something useful. Well, I don't want to use a rallying cry, or an aim shot for that matter. Solidarity of the weak, now it doesn't seem to give us any benefit other than advancing the, the locations. And I could steal, but it starts a, a um, search party. I don't know. Oh, let's try our rallying cry. Well, we can also do some of these things. We can pay to get four food. We just don't need that. That's the problem. So let's try his rallying cry. And uh, we'll do that here on the on the tavern. Over here. Oh, we got a fame. Leo's mighty roar drew a crowd of curious town folk. Interesting. A small crowd. Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it never fails to draw a crowd. So I wonder if we do another rallying cry. No, it doesn't seem to do anything. Solidarity of the weak. The poor, the weak, and the needy must stick together. Volpe can inspire compassion. Well, let's do that. It's going to get us a goal, and we'll move through the scene. Here, this should help you get back on your feet. Well, how very altruistic. I agree. And look at that. We're back in our marketplace. So we can use this um, directions to Timothy in the marketplace to advance the, let's see, uh, story effect. So let's let's do that, I think. Outstanding. A heavily bandaged figure stood alone in the alleyway. He looked like he was waiting for someone. As Volpe and Leo approached, the figure turned to greet them. Ah, Leo, so you're finally here and you brought a crow. I'm a shoe bill. That's what he was, a shoe bill. But of course you are. We heard you have work. Do I ever, but before we get down to brass hacks, 
I always like to get an understanding of who it is I'm working with. What do you mean? I'd like a demonstration of the value you'll bring to this operation. What operation? Demonstration? I did the wrong voice there. Demonstration? Yes, you know, skills, my boys. Show me your skills. The pair looked at each other, perplexed. What did he mean, skills? Skills in combat? Sleight of hand? Or maybe just a good old trick shot from Leo? Well, okay, so we have some options here. It's telling us all of our skill cards are a viable choice. So we could use our nimble hands when you, uh, to, that would advance the story. Uh, we can do a diversion. Leo can take an aim shot. You know, I got a feeling we're going to need that. Uh, rallying cry will do nothing to advance that part or another aim shot. Let's take one of the two aim shots. Uh, because he does have two. In one seamless motion, Leo pulled out his bow and let fly an arrow straight at the leper. Timothy felt a whoosh of air as the hat flew clean off his head. By the time he turned around, it was already pinned to a nearby tree. How was that for a demonstration? A little dramatic, but a fine shot nonetheless. Timothy turned around, picked up his hat, and placed it carefully back on his head. Well, I've certainly seen enough to pique my interest. Then perhaps you could tell us what it was you needed. I would like for the two of you to acquire an item for me. A very rare and beautiful liar currently in the possession of Lady Cattell. You mean the old bat who lives on the hill? I wouldn't call her that to her face. But yes, that's her. <laughs> I'd like you to break into her manor, steal the liar, and bring it to me at the Holy Grove. The Holy Grove, I know that place well. I'll get you there myself, Volpan. Excellent, then I shall leave you to it. All right, we've got a job to do. At long last. We can get straight to it if you think we're ready to go. Or we could spend some more time on the streets to prepare. It's your call. <sighs> Actually, how's about a small nap before we set off? You read my mind. Remember, you only have a limited number of skill cards in your adventure's deck. Spending too many of their skill cards will tire them out. Oh, okay. So there's an exhaustion mechanic in this. If you want to recover some skill cards, you will have to rest cards on the right-hand side of the board. Each rest card has its own set of effects and sometimes a price that you can decide to pay or not. Read them carefully to see what they cost. Go on, click on the rest deck, and try to use the first rest card. Here's our new location. Another Friends combat of yours, location. Volpan. Let's see what's in this rest deck. These are rest cards left in this region. You can roll over all the cards to discover their effects, but you can only use the top card. This one is rest, an uneventful stop, recover, recover up to three skill cards per adventure, which is a nice break. So I guess we've decided Enough to rest. Let's Feeling better joint. already. You recovered some skill cards and suffered no other consequences. Don't expect it to be that easy all the time. The next card in the deck will cost you food or health points. And the last card of the rest deck is always a game over. So be sure to check out how many times you can hope to rest in a region. Once you move on to the next region, the rest deck will be replaced with a new set of cards. And the number of rest cards in the next region is independent of how many you've used here. Okay. You have completed this region. You can either proceed to the next region or you might want to spend some more time here to gather resources and allies. But then I guess you're spending some of your skill cards, so I don't know how smart that is or not. Beware, consumables and resources are carried over from one region to the next, but they are not carried over from one mission to the next, so there's no need to hoard excessively. Okay, that makes sense. Read you complete, move on when you're ready. I think we just move on. Yeah, we can just move on. 
Choose the next region. Well, it looks like we only have one choice. Somewhere in the garden. Leo has brought Volpan to the city garden where food is plentiful and secrets lurk around every corner. Deep in the labyrinth lies our hero's destination for the evening, Lady Cattell's Manor. Here we go. Watch out, guards. Okay, so that's a search party up there. There are now several hostile creatures in the search party, the deck of cards representing the animals chasing your party. Each time a new location card appears on the board, if it has a search party call token with an eye, it means it may spawn a group of enemies from the search party. Some of your actions may also add hostiles to the search party, hostiles that you may have to face later, so be careful. There's our four locations. Right then, Timothy said the instrument is inside Lady Cattell's Manor. The big house with the labyrinth? That is there. That's the one, but getting through that hedge maze is going to be tough. I think I saw some gardeners wandering around earlier. Maybe they'd know the way. Okay, yes, so I we're looking... A good lawyer, Volpan. Here comes Ooh. trouble. We're looking for some gardeners. That's the vegetable labyrinth. Full of wrong turn and dead ends. It's almost impossible to navigate with that direction. So we're definitely looking for the gardeners, who is right there. So we can do a few things now. The gardener, he knows these gardens like the back of his hand. And if you're polite, he'll even show you where all the best apples are. So we can play um, our rallying cry. No, that doesn't do much. We can shoot him. That's not probably a good idea. That doesn't do much. That doesn't do much. Okay, that one. Uh, we'd be stealing apples, but that doesn't get us through the maze. So what else can we do here? So we can do points. We can pay him one gold and get one loot, I guess, or another action card uh, and move through. Food does nothing. We can trade on our fame. A good deed can open many doors. Why don't we do that? Because is that the, the, the most polite way to do it, I guess? Grim, Tef, Murder, well, we don't want to generate those, so let's let's take one of these and, and see what happens. A little help? Sure thing. Now, all we need to do is lead the gardener to the labyrinth, and the rest should be easy. <laughs> Something tells me. We'll see about that. Okay, so we got a new card. Could be something good there. Most decks on the board can be browsed. For example, if you check the content of the exploration deck, you can see what would be the next location to be revealed. I didn't know you could do that. Maybe your current objective is somewhere in there. Maybe you want to check if the card you're looking for is coming soon. If a card is not in the exploration deck, there may be a way to access it with some location effects or some story advancement effects. And remember, the exploration Exploration deck is cycling. There has to be a way in. I agree. Look, I can see some documents through the glass. You think they'll be useful? Only one way to find out. Maybe that gardener could open the door for us. Oh, is that this thing? A locked greenhouse. A heavy chain blocks the way to the greenhouse. Breaking the glass would attract too much attention. There has to be a quiet way in. But what if we move... Oh, but it's saying... Well, that's the labyrinth right there, isn't it? Well, let's move him to the labyrinth. I thought that's what the goal was. We have an appointment with the lady of the house. Would you show us the way through the maze? I've trimmed these hedges many a time. Follow me. That's quite a statue. Ugh. What is it? Sorry, sirs. I'd rather not go any further. What? You're serious? We're barely halfway. It's this statue, sirs. Bad luck it is. Haunted. You didn't know it was there. The gardener backed away from the statue nervously, leaving Volpan Leo alone. They had to admit it was a rather foreboding sight. Great. Shh. I think I hear a guard patrol coming. Quick, hide. You better have a warrant. The patrol took up position right in front of the statue. Patrols, we can deal with, but how are we going to find our way through the rest of this labyrinth? There's got to be a map around here somewhere. 
How else do the gardeners find their way around in and out? Maybe you're right. Let's circle back and see if we can find the map. If at any point you're lost during a mission, you can always use the hint system. I bet you we're going to have to do that. Hovering over the button will show a very condensed reminder of your current objective. Using the hint system will trigger some help based on your current situation. Excuse me. Get through the maze. Okay, well, we know that. Well, we got nine guard strength there. That seems scary. There is this place, though, the locked greenhouse. I don't want to break the cat. Okay, so maybe if he takes... Uh, I don't know. Survivor sense. Is that going to get us in there? Let's try that. Okay. We've got a new location of the orchard. And we gained healing plants. Chewing these roots can provide a minor pain relief, but hand them to, a herb to an herbalist and they can make you a powerful healing bomb. All right. I just glimpsed over at my raccoon -y face over there. Um, okay, so we can either choose to fight or maybe explore this area. Fruit is the cornerstone of the average citizen's diet. Only nobles or skilled hunters can claim to eat the much rarer and much tastier insect meat. Whatever that means. Okay, so this is just, he can he can get two food and we move through the location. This would just change the location card. Years in the wilderness have made Leo an outstanding tracker with a flair for sniffing out food in places of interest. Why don't we try that? That sounds pretty good. And we're back. <laughs> there could be food inside. A good spot to loot. Look, I can see some documents through the glass. I wonder if that's the map. You'd think they'd be useful? Only one way to find out. Maybe that gardener could open the door for us. Yeah, while well, he left. <laughs> so, that's not happening. Um, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. None of his stuff works. And it doesn't look like any of ours will get me. Oh, maybe. We can do his rallying cry. Although, that, I bet you that gets some... Well, let's try. Maybe we'll get the gardener back. Is that possible? Over here. It's the gardener. Need some help, sir? Now, how do we get him again? We paid him last time. That worked. Not interested in food. Oh, no. We did the fame thing, didn't we? Um, or... That doesn't do anything. That doesn't... Well, that gets us a lot of bad effects. None of, the, none of our skills are very good. Maybe some of the action cards. So we can use the fame again if we want. Um, or we can pay him one gold. I'm thinking we use a fame. And then we'll get him back in our pack. A little help? Sure thing. So now we want to get that greenhouse back, but of course it's not. So this is Thorny Bushes. You like scratches? Because if you go through this way, you're going to get scratches. So we, we don't want to go that way. Do we have anything that'll advance us, but it's going to give us scratches, I see, no matter what. Oof. Well, why don't we try? We haven't tried a battle yet, so let's let's give that a try. A group of representatives of the law, in order to play on the card they keep, you have to get rid of them. And violence is not the only solution. So that's going to spawn these two goofs. A constable with one attack and two health, I guess. And a hungry guard. More likely to be on a snack break than on duty. Um, let's engage. All right. How much is it going to cost to forget about all this? You've started your first confrontation, but maybe there's no need for violence. When you hover over the guards at your disposal, you may discover ways to get rid of some of your opponents. If you get rid of enough opponents, you'll bring the morale of the group down to zero and the rest will flee. I'm thinking that's morale up here. If you use an aggressive card, the confrontation will automatically turn into a fight. But if you don't have any cards to play or you don't want to play any cards, click on the auto battle token to trigger the fight manually. Well, play any number of non-aggressive cards or start the fight with a combat. Well, let's see. If we play our food, 
Uh, that would take one food out. I don't know what the rest of the effects are, though. We would lose a food, and I guess I would lower it by one morale? On this one? Or is that the morale down there? Why don't we... You know what? Let's try playing uh, a food on this guy and see what happens. An enemy was just removed from the confrontation. In most cases, this will subtract its level from the enemy's morale. Should the enemy morale reach zero, the remaining hostiles will flee. The level of an enemy is the number in the top left corner of the card. Okay, so that took out one. We're down to point five. We're not down to zero, though. That's the problem. Food has no... That card has no interest in food. Uh, we don't have two fame to trade. We don't have four grim to trade. All we can do is pay him two gold. Let's be pacifists and pay him. Thinking as always. Okay, so that's opened up a patrolled garden. Interesting. All right. City gardens are usually about guard. Well, we took away the guard, so let's see if any of our actions can do anything. I see one that can change up the scene. Is there any that'll give us food and change up the scene? Uh, just that one. It looks like we've moved to the next location, but I, you know what? I should have been paying more attention to which locations came after which. Um, let's do this. Oh, no. Move to the orchard. Or this is the orchard. Oh, yeah. It's going to move us to the orchards. That's not really what we want either. Click on this deck to browse. We want to get to here. So we have a couple more locations. I think we're just going to have to do that. So there's the order. I knew I smelled apples over here. No, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, let's see. Survivor Sense is going to give us three food and we'll travel through to the next location. That sounds good. Oh, those are quite delicious with saute with a little honey. And if no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I've moved to the next location, but we've got some guards there. Let's see what we're going to face. Same type of trio. Duho. Blue. Um, let's engage. Okay, so he's a one, he's a two. We can do it at battle. That doesn't do anything. Oh, apparently that's bad. Oh. That would cause a diversion. Play any number of non-aggressive cards or start to fight with a combat card on the auto battle token. Hmm. Both of those do the same now. We can get rid of the one guy with food again. One food. And that takes him out of play. But the other guy's not interested in food and we don't have enough money or anything else, which leaves us with a whole bunch of combat. Well, let's do the diversion, see what happens. Alright, so we're looks like we're fighting. Between each round of attack, you can play one card per adventure. Again, if you don't want to play cards, you can use the auto battle token. Alright, looks like we've taken him out, but fighting means we've gained a Grim card. And we didn't really advance through there, did we? Well, let's put him on the scent again and get a new location. And we're back in the orchard. Okay, I'm confused now. Uh, let's see. I knew I smelled apples over here. He's always about the apples. At least one of your adventures is down to their last few skill cards. Maybe you can use the rest deck to recover some. Since the rest cards will give skill cards back to adventures, it's often a good idea to use actions from all your adventures and not just one. Yeah, I haven't been doing that well, that's for sure. If you spread the effort between them, they won't have to rest as often. You may rest by a campfire for a while to regain some of your... Can I do that? Tracked by guards. Recover up to three skill points, but a troop of guards is eight added to the search party. Don't think I really want to do that. We need to get through this maze somehow. I guess we're going to, like, that's a lot to fight with. 
got to be a way around this. What if we just go through the thorny bushes, I guess? Oh, ouchie. Ouch! Knew it! Over here. And there's our gardener again. I don't know what he's going to do for us, but... Can we talk him into joining us? I guess we have to... No, not food. We're going to give him our last dollar. So let's give him one fame again to come into our hand. Sure thing! Okay, so we have two gardeners in our hand. And there's another gardener. We have a fleet of gardeners. We need to get through this. What if we play one of them on here? It's going to give us four food and move us along. Here we go. There could be some good loot. Look, I can see some documents through the glass. Oh, that's the same as last time. You think they'll be useful? Only one way to find out. Maybe that gardener could open the door for us. At least we have them now, so let's try that. I'm going to move into the winter garden. Look! It looks like a map of the labyrinth. Oh, what do you know? But only the last part of the maze. That's the only part we need. Perfect. Let's go back and follow the map from the center of the labyrinth. I was afraid they were going to say that. So we need to head here. Let's hope a lot of them are going to be uh, paid off with food. Because this is going to be a tough fight. Let's give it a try. Worst comes to worst. We don't make it through. We've got a total of 4.5 morale. One of, the another way. one of the hostiles you're facing has a special power. Special powers are signified by wooden tokens on the left side of creature cards. Enemy powers can trigger during the negotiation phase or during combat. They may trigger once or every few rounds. If you hover over a creature card, you'll see a detailed description of its powers. Okay, we have a sip of tea here. We'll take a look at the problem we're going to face. It's weird that it smiled when I was drinking tea. All right. So the special power here is Bell of the Watch. It's his responsibility to sound the alarm, and it's a responsibility he takes very seriously. It adds a constable to the search party every round. So we need to find a way to get rid of that guy. Now we can use our... It looks like we're going to do a fight, but I think we need to try and lower our risk here somehow. So let's get rid of whoever we can with food cards first. We have seven food. That's one out of play. That's two out of play. Now, do any of our other cards do anything? Now, we need three of those. No one else cares about food. And we just don't have enough of anything else. Oh, boy. So, we're going to have a fight. So, we need to take out that Bell of the Watch guy first. Uh, let's use Vol uh, Sorry, Leo's... Aim shot. Deadly shot in combat that can also take out enemies from a distance without raising an alarm while well, we're already not at a distance. Take this. Oh, he felt that one. That takes him out. So they've attacked us. One of your adventurers is hurt. If any of your adventurers reach zero health points, the mission is lost and you'll have to replay it. You can use food or other consumables to heal. Well, we do have that root or whatever that was. But maybe you should also consider swapping the positions of your adventurers during fights. I guess if someone's putting up more damage, I can move whoever has more health. At any time during a fight, you can swap two adventurers, two adventurers to try and optimize how damage is spread among them. Here's a quick breakdown of creature cards. The number in the red token at the bottom left represents health points. Bring it to zero and the creature will be dead. Number next to the sword icon is the attack score. Makes sense how much they're going to damage us. And the number in the top left corner is the level of the creature. That's pretty important because it's the value removed from the enemy's morale when the creature is removed from combat one way or the other. Now that's interesting. 
In a confrontation, there can be one or two fighters per side per column. Only the front creature will take damage from the auto battle phase, but it will take damage equal to the sum of the attack scores of the opposition. Creatures in the back can only be affected by action cards or after the creature in front of them has been defeated. All makes sense. Fair enough. Well, unless I'm misunderstanding this, I think we can take out the burly guard, which should lower this enough that he should run away. Is that not the way it works? Let's try another shot on this guy. No, wait a minute. This doesn't... Oh, that doesn't do anything. Oh, it'll put up his attack by one. So if I do my rallying cry... Yeah! My, now my attack talking. goes up to two. Um, let's try that, and then we can... Oh, he doesn't have any cards he can use. Well, that was a waste. Oops. A diversion... Nimble heads, I can steal something on them, or nimble hands. That's all I got. Well, let's try that. That's going to increase my attack. Watch out. Ooh, I'm injured. Are you sure it's a good idea killing watch guards like But at that? least that got them and ended the fight for him. All remaining hostiles will now flee for their lives. When you trigger a panic, each fleeing enemy will grant you one fame. Leaving so soon. Okay. Using the hint system multiple times may give more explicit help for more complex situations. I think it's trying to tell me that I should have done that. All right, we've got directions. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. And there we go. We get to use our map. If I'm reading this right, we should be in there. We should be there in no time. Good thing too. It's almost nighttime. Perfect timing. The darker, the better. That's Lady Cattell's manor. Finally! Hey, and maybe that was the hard part, and it's all downhill from here. Why would he say that? Wishful thinking. It's getting dark. Time to get down to business. Hold on a second. This could be our last chance to rest up. I need my nimble hands at the ready. Sometimes your adventurers won't have their best skill cards in their hand, but don't worry. Anytime you're not in combat, you can trade a skill card from your hand for another one. Just drag the card above its owner's deck and choose the new card. Just drag the card above its owner's deck. Okay. If the card is unavailable from your draw pile, you will have to pay a fixed price of one food per card. It's a little expensive, especially considering you could have rested to regain several cards at once. But the cost of resting can be also pretty high, so be careful not to burn through too many skill cards by training, trading them. Well, I, I, I have an Eve's Trough, I have a Nimble Hands, and I have a Diversion. I don't think he needs to rest. So, however, I can't seem to do anything. Perch stop to hell. The old bat is seldom seen outside by day. So what do we want to do here? How do we advance the story? I don't see that anywhere. Oh, right there. I've got to use my Nimble Hands on the manor. Let's see what happens. All right, let's do this. Do what you do best. I'll cover the exit. Under the cover of night, Volpan ghosted into the manor undetected. He darted through the corridors until he reached the main hall. There, in plain sight, stood the lyre in all its splendor, glinting in the moonlight. All he had to do was reach out and take it. The second he touched the mysterious liar, Volpan felt an ancient power flowing through him. Reality fractured and exploded into an infinite number of worlds, all identical and yet somehow distinct. Beyond the webs of fate, he witnessed all possible futures resonating, vibrating, clashing. Then he saw and he knew. He, his loved ones, his city, his kingdom, his world, everything was going to disappear, swallowed up by a cataclysm whose origin lurked behind the veil of possibilities. Oof. The second he touched the relic, the sheer power of the visions caused poor Volpant to collapse on the spot. Leo took his unconscious friend on his back and fled the mansion, an army of guards at his heels. Hang in there, old friend. 
We'll get through this. Mm. I'll deal with the guards and get you to a safe place. Volpe? Volpe? We completed this mission with a few victims in your graveyard deck. For now, it won't change anything, but beware. If you leave a trail of bodies behind you, you may have to face the consequences later. Couldn't have done it better myself. Victory! Woo! <laughs> Volpin awoke in the forest of Ronsere, mm, his head throbbing. The liar was on the ground beside him, but Leo was nowhere to be found. Uh, Leo? Leo? Where is he? What happened? At that moment, he remembered the visions. Impossible! Before he had time to think, Volpan was struck with a vision of his friend in prison. A wave of despair swept over him. Leo, where are they taking him? Are they going to execute him? Oh, gods, please no. This is a Doom event card. It symbolizes tragic events that only Volpan can see and that will lead to the world, lead the world to its end. The number above the Doom event indicates how many turns you have left before it happens, or at least that's if you do nothing to prevent it. Each mission you complete costs a turn, but don't worry, if you fail to complete a mission you can always retry with no time penalty. Okay. I need to help him before it's too late. They must have locked him up in Eisenberg Prison. Prison? Why did I say that so strange? This is a mission card. The choice of which missions you complete and the order in which you complete them is crucial to preventing doom events from occurring. Missions also contain secret side objectives and choices, all leading to different outcomes. It's up to you to experiment and make the right choices to fight fate. I'm coming, Leo! Wait, what the... No! Volpan was struck with another flash. The smell of blood, the clash of metal, the roar of a battle. A vision of a massacre yet to come. The miners strike! Father! The militia are preparing an attack on the blockade! Lady Cattell must be behind this. I have to warn them or they'll all be slaughtered. If I'm going to warn the miners, I'll need to find their leader, Karst. They won't budge an inch without his say-so. Uh, gah, what have I done? It's this damn instrument. Volpe looked at the strange liar with disgust. I wish I'd never touched the blasted thing. Uh, maybe if I give it back to Lady Cattell, that might smooth things over? After all, the fault confessed is half redressed. If I write a letter of apology and present it to the Council of Mothers, they might be able to put pressure on Cattell and prevent her from ordering the massacre. Volpin looked at the liar once more before packing it into his satchel. Slowly, painfully, he dragged himself to his feet. All right, Volpin. You can fix this. He took a look around in an effort to get his bearings. To his left, he saw the fumes of the city rising above the trees. To his right, the silhouette of the Ferris Mount shrouded in the acrid smoke from the mines. Better get moving. Our adventure begins now. Make your own choices and discover their consequences. Welcome to Four Tales. Oh, select the next mission your adventurers will tackle. Well, you know, I do believe a lot in helping friends. Um... I don't know how this all works though, so we've done the relic. We have some choices to make here. Do we negotiate to give the liar back? Uh, we gotta go for our friend. I don't know what happens if you click here. I don't know what that means either. Uh, let's do the prisoner. 
The theft of the relic didn't exactly go as planned. Leo's in jail and Lady Cattell is out for revenge. Volpen needs to break his friend out fast. So that's the one. Uh, okay, we can't do that. So that's the event itself we're trying to prevent. So we have two missions, I guess, until that happens. We have to do it. We have to do it. He's our buddy. Here we go. Choose your companions. Well, we only have me. Volpe. Find a way in. The City Watch is holding Leo in the local jail. Volpen needs to find a way inside to rescue him. Time for a prison break. Let's see what we get here. Leo's locked up in there. There has to be a way in. I have a friend in there. I was hoping I'd be able to pay him a visit. Visit? What you think this is? A bloody retirement home? Perhaps we could come to some sort of an arrangement. Well, perhaps if you arrange for me to get five gold, I'll forget I ever saw you. I'm not even going to try doing weird accents. Five gold? Gah, where am I going to get that from? Here comes trouble. Okay, so we got an apple merchant. We have a marketplace where we're going to spend money, or I can try stealing some. Like, we have a guard post with a bunch of guards. And we have an old well. A good place to refresh oneself or take a quick wash. And we have the prison entrance. Well, we've already tried that, so we need five gold. Can I sneak in? That would be the question, because I don't see this lighting up any of our things, so no. Uh, we can definitely... Go to the old well and get some extra food. We can fight, but with just me, I don't see that being a great idea. And what else? Uh, we've got the apple merchant, where we could buy or steal some food. And we've got the marketplace. So let's see what this does. So if we do the solid solidarity of the week, we can get... A new location card. Uh, we can do nimble hands, steal some food, but start a search party for us. We can make a diversion. We'll just let us move through it. Nimble hands again, and solidarity of the week again. Uh, I think I'm going to play solidarity of the week on the apple guy. We'll get the two food. My poor friend here, take this. I wonder if that's the same guy. Looks the same. <laughs> Um, okay, small crowd. So I can use my nimble hands to steal from them. Do I have, I have a diversion. Did I not have something better? Oh, Solidarity of the Week. We can play that on them. It'll give us a gold. Here, this should help you get back on your feet. Very kind, I must say. Ah! Bandits. Oh, more bandits. Okay, Lovely. these are bandits and these are guards. So, uh, nothing else is... Oh, wait, what's that? I can play Nimble Hands on that fountain, which is going to give us a food and a gold. Let's do that. And we'll move through it. Ooh, shiny. I say, do you scamps know a way inside the prison? Besides getting arrested, sir? Yes, besides getting arrested. No idea, sir, but you could ask around the other kids. Most of our parents have been in the clink at some time or the other, sir. If there's a hidden entrance, someone must know about it. Maybe some street kids or shady locals could help? Now that's an eavesdrop. So do we want to waste that eavesdrop on the ki those kids who've told us to go to other kids? Let's try that, just because I don't know how it works. Hmm, good to know. Okay, we've done something there. We have an eavesdrop again. We have local chit-chat, a little morsel of gospel, gossip, gospel. Heard around town, it mightn't be worth much, but it's a conversation starter, at least. Okay, all right. Um... 
He's got remaining skill cards. He has zero remaining cards. So that's my hand, pretty much. That's, that's all I got. And what's coming next? See, I want to talk to these guys and get the uh, get the skinny. Now, does that mean they're next or they're next? I'm not sure. We need to advance a location, so let's definitely do that. Um, that doesn't work. That adds to a search party. Yes, none of those are particularly good. Now, we can spend two apples to gain two gold and move through. Let's do that. Make a trade. Not a good price for those apples at the market. Oh, look at that. Fair exchange, no robbery. <laughs> For once. <laughs> All right. Now, can we play this local chit chat? Oh, that's just going to give Oh, what about our eavesdrop? Yes, let's do that. We'll receive another local chit chat. Obviously, it wasn't the one we were looking for. Our deck's getting a little skinny here. Okay, let's talk to the uh, apple guy and get some more apples. Well, that's lunch, and maybe soldier. if we get another marketplace, we can sell them. Huh. My father's in that prison, sir. I sneak in to visit him from time to time. Perfect. Show me the way. Aha, there we go. Over there, it looks like there's a way in. All right, so we know that that's coming up next it looks like from left to right they're the next location okay so it's a little sneaky way in we just have to make our way to it um these guys will give us something for that chit chat i'll tag along to hear the rest of the story oh we got a helper you've recruited at least one fighting ally Allies can be used on your adventure cards during fights. They will add their attack score to the attack of the adventure for as long as they survive. Depending on the type of ally, they will position themselves in front of or behind your adventure. Front allies add a layer of protection and preserve your health, but may not survive the whole fight. Allies in the back will only serve as support to increase the attack, but they are most likely to survive until the end of the confrontation. Whether they survive or not, allies used in combat are discarded at the end of the confrontation. Fair enough. Ah, very sneaky. I agree. Here it is. Come on, let's go. Hold on, Leo. I'm coming. Move on when you're ready. Huh. So I guess this is our next region. Let's go. Free Leo from his cell. Now that he's inside the prison, Volpan needs to find Leo's cell and break him out of there. Something tells me we're going to be doing some battles here. The prison was dark, dank, and foreboding. Mournful wails echoed down the grimy corridors. Guards growled the halls, prowled the halls, eager to dish out a beating to anyone who stepped out of line. Slipping by unnoticed wasn't going to be easy. Oh. Well, that's on our search party. <laughs> Jeez. I'd recognize that tale anywhere. Mm. Volpan, in here. I'm coming, old friend. Well, I hope you have a good lawyer, Volpan. Now, who could that be? Hey, psst, whoever you are, over here. Let me out of the cell and I'll make it worth your while. Oh, yeah? And how's that exactly? I get the sense you're not supposed to be here, yes. <laughs> I know a little magic trick that could throw the guards off your trail. Agitated prison prison quarter. It won't take much to tip this cell block into a full-blown riot. A mournful cry echoes on, so we can't. Please, you have to find a way to open this cell. I'm too pretty for the big house. Not to mention you soul. Huh. And none of our cards do anything with that. So we have guards and guards. This is Leo's cell. They've locked the door in the dark. Now, where do we find the key? An escaped prisoner. Looks like someone escaped their cell. Whoever it was, they seem to have the guards in a panic. There's the guards room. What if there's a key in there? Let's see. And divert nimble hands. Oh, it looks like it's going to get us food. Not what we're looking for. 
Okay, and none of these seem to do anything useful whatsoever. I guess that this guy makes one of them run away. That's not going to help us either. So, let's put the peppery diversion down in the... Uh, we'll get a bunch of rioters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can somebody crack a window, please? <laughs> the inmates are breaking out under the cover of the smoke. Now, can we recruit one of these? A bunch of rioters. It doesn't take much to transform the downtrodden people of the hard republic into an angry mob. So we can pickpocket them. That doesn't seem like it would be smart. Uh, can we feed them? Nope, doesn't do anything. We could pay them three, three gold. Let's do that. Take this and go have yourself a little fun. Yes, that's it. Okay. What, what have you done this time? We have a firebomb, <laughs> which we can try and get the snake out. Why don't we do that? I don't know what I'm doing here, so we're just trying for some fun here. All right, step away from the gate. Great. Why? It's a surprise. Wait. What? Fire in the hole! The blast tore the greater part, spreading fire everywhere. Not exactly what you'd call stealthy, but at least the prisoner was ah, free. The quiet route. Uh oh. As the ringing in his ears subsided, Volpe could hear a commotion coming from down the corridors. The blast had alerted, alerted the cards. Oh well. We tried. It got the job done, didn't it? Yeah, you could say that, I guess. I'm not sure what I want to know. I'm sorry. I'm not sure I want to know the answer to this, but. What exactly are you in here for? It's a snake. I've got what doctors refer to as an incurable case of kleptomania. I'm guessing that your time behind bars hasn't helped your condition. Hard to say, really. I know more. I'll know more once I get out. Now, hold on a minute. What about our deal? A shrill alarm bell pierced through the gloom of the prison corridors. There would be no more hiding. The guards knew there was an intruder on the loose. Okay, so we got quite the search party looking for us. Yeah, this is just what we need. Wolf has acquired one new skill card. Cut purse. Patience, patience. The timing isn't quite right. But I'll keep up my end of the bargain, promise. There's just one thing that bothers me. What is it? You spent all that time in your cell. Yes. And it never once occurred to you that you could slip through the bars. <laughs> you make a fine point, sir. I'll remember that for the next time I'm locked up in here. Oh, oh, that sounds suspicious. And without a care in the world, the thief slithered away down a long corridor into the darkness. Hmm. Uh-oh. better have a warrant. All right. I think, let's see what that card does. The cat purse. As an experienced thief will tell you, you should never pick a pocket when you can cut a purse. More, okay, so that's all that does. Uh, we're gonna have to go confront somebody. So we've got a long corridor, another long corridor, an escaped prisoner. <sighs> let's try, let's try this escape prisoner. We're gonna face, oh, he has a special power. One random guard from the search party deck when entering comes. We're going to end up with an extra one here. Uh, let's try this one, maybe? Yeah, he's got the at a console every round, so we need to take him out right away somehow. So let's, let's try this. Maybe we can just talk our way out of this? Oh, no. Well, they maybe. Might be persuaded to forget about all this for the right price. Okay. Um, I don't want to take food. My health is five. Let's try it. Can we... Oh, that guard is not even interested. Uh-oh. Anyone want to... Yeah. Well, let's take this guy. If we're going to bribe one of them and it's the same cost, we'll bribe the one with the stronger attack Good and the health. Around, which say. reduce it to zero. Okay. So they fleed and we have no damage, but we need to move in there and see what's going on in that guard's room. Uh, cut purse will do. 
food. We're looking for something more than food, though. But nothing does that, so let's let's do that, I guess. We got lots of food. Take that one to go. And we're back to the guard room again with less cards to use. We're gonna have to do another combat, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a health break. Okay, so we've got six health now. That's something at least. And we will yeah, try and take these guys on. Okay. You can grease the wheels of yeah, can I? When entering combat. Oh, did he do that already? Okay, I don't know. Oh, no, it's not combat yet. So we need to get him away somehow. So he'll take two of my fame and go away. Let's get him away. That's right. It's the Volpan. And then we should only have to beat one more of them. Neither of them are interested in food, though. We don't have the gold. We don't have any of those things. We're going to have to fight. Damn it. I was hoping to avoid that. Um, none of our skills. Well, let's see. This will... Nimble hands, nimble hands. We have three nimble hands. This will up our fight by the yeah. Takes him out, and that should end the fight. And there we go. Yay! Tell my mother I... Man, he ran away. Okay, which cleared the area. Let's see what... We do anything in there? What does this do? Let's spend two of those, and we'll receive a mercenary. You know, I forgot I could play those guys in my hand. The problem is we don't have a key to get them out, and I used the bomb somewhere else. We have problems. Um, let's try and... Uh, hey, mean lady. Let's try and clear these guards out, and uh, maybe I can use these allies to help me out. That's Nothing nasties, the though. Fight with the watch guards. Perhaps there's another way. Yeah, well, we're gonna try. Okay, and we'll also bring this guy out. Oh, can I? Oh, we're still in the non-aggressive phase. He's gonna fight as soon as he comes in, I guess. Um, let's eat a food. I want it let me. Oh, there we go. Get one of our health back. And none of those guards up there look like they're interested in food, which means this is a fight. Um, let's try that. We stole some money from him, but that didn't do anything. <laughs> and we're gonna have we're just gonna have to fight. Oh, we've got our peppery diversion, the perfect way to cause a commotion or to incapacitate enemies in combat. Definitely playing that. So he's fled. They're stunned. You're doing fighting the watch. Ah, he's gonna bring in that guy now, isn't he? Okay, well we beat that one. And then the other one should flee, I hope. Better luck next time. There we go. Way to go, Volpan. We still have that, and I have no cards to play. Can I rest now? I forget how that works. If we rest, spend three to avoid problems. No. Recover up to three seal cards, but a small troop of guards is added to the search fire. We're going to have to do that to get our cards back. And there we go. These adventurers, am I right? <laughs> no sense of urgency. So we actually took a nap in the middle of freeing our friend from prison. Um, all right, well, let's go see what we got here. Oh, he's a toughie. A burly guard. Well, let's see what we can do. Please, hopefully one of them makes food. That would be nice. They must be persuaded we got lots of food. All this for the right price. Yeah, maybe. Nope. Well, I'm going to take one and buff my health again to six, because this might be rough. Um, we can get rid of one of them over there with one of our gold. Let's do that. Just as I suspected, they're all on the take. Okay. And let's bring out our mercenary friend. 
is going to go in front of us, which acts as a bit of a meat shield with four health. So that is good. I like those odds. Um, we're going to play our Peppery Diversion. Take them both out of play. And there we go. We attack one. We attack both of them. Took one out and we reduced the morale to zero. So even our Burly Guard should free. And now we'll be able to maybe rescue our friend Leo. Leo, are you okay? Can we talk when I'm out of here? Look for the warden. She must have the key. Oh, okay. Is there a warden? Oh, she's next. That's the next location cards we have. So we just need to move to a location. Oh, we'll play our nimble hands because at least it'll give us two food and we'll move through. To some of the other things he's stolen, this one's got a bit of a height advantage. And wait. Was ready to take on Guards, be prepared! Alright, so we have eight. I probably should have saved that mercenary. Oh boy. You remember you can swap any skill card in your hand with a card from the deck of an adventurer, right? You have to discard the skill card you exchange and maybe pay one food for any card coming from the discard pile. Really important to prepare for encounters like this, for example, when you know you've got a big fight coming. Well, I didn't at all. <laughs> If you intend to roll... <laughs> Jeez. Um, that's my skill card deck, so how do I get them out of there? Oh, the discard pile. I see. What's going to help us here? Cat purse, nimble hands, definitely the peppery diversion, but I think I have one of those still. These drops not going to help. We don't really have any great combat cards to choose from. Let's close that for now. We're just going to have to grin and bear it. Oh boy. That's some high health. Right. Okay, so I mean, we're going to have to play our peppery diversion. Nimble hands will steal something from them, so let's try that first. I'll steal from her. We got the key. And a lockpick. And Leo Selkie, so that's good. Now we just have to somehow survive this. <laughs> you know what you're doing fighting the watch. This is gonna suck. <laughs> Over here. Yeah. Back to my turn. I just don't see anything I can play other than to keep healing myself, so I will. They're both only attacking with one power each. I don't think I have anything that'll... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Tell me, well, we got rid of one of them. <laughs> Barely touched their morale. I'm going to need to heal, like, right away. Maybe, maybe two, actually. Oh. Keep adding guards to the watch. I'm about to die. Can I bribe anybody? Oh, I can. I can make... Nope. Hold on a second. I can make that guy run away. Excuse me, hero coming through. And now I die, basically. Oh, Bopan. Oh. And that is it for this round. Of course, it's replayable, which we will do um, on another try. For now, I am going to take a five minute break, make myself a tea, and I will be uh, back and we will try uh, maybe some Food Chain Island in Tabletop Simulator, if that sounds good. Uh, should I actually, I guess we'll do that all while I'm away. Uh, give me one second. We will switch over to our Be Right Back. And I'm back as a little baby lion, apparently. Uh, don't know how well this one will work. Can you see me blinking? Blink. Ah. Uh, it's cute. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Okay. The mouth movements aren't bad. 
I uh, hope you can hear a little bit of the music in the background. Let's turn that up. And we are live with Food Chain Island. A very quick solo game I am going to do before ending the stream today. Um, quick recap of the rules because I know you've probably already seen this. Uh, food Chain Island, it's literally kind of like it sounds. We have to follow the food chain. So, for example, let's go look at the polar bear here. So the polar bear is a level 15. Uh, his special power is on our next turn. Next turn, he can't. I can't use the polar bear again to eat. So a 15 can eat a 14, a 13, or a 12. Uh, a 10, which is the lynx, can eat a 9, 8, or 7. And his power is on your next turn, the animal must jump over one card in an orthogonal direction to eat. So you kind of have to watch uh, not only the cards being able to eat other cards, what the power you're going to trigger is. You have to take all of that into uh, in, into account before you make a move. So let's give a few things out here. Oh, you also have the two special cards. One would be the shark, which allows you to move an animal one space to eat, but it can only eat an animal of, it can eat an animal of any smaller value, which can help big time. Or the whale, move one animal to any other space. Those are one use cards um, and that's it. So it's a one shotter. So really you should be really stuck before you want to do that. So let's take a look, uh, for example, a good move could be the lion eating the gator, a 14 to a 13, and the lion's power is on our next turn, the animal must eat an animal valued exactly one less. So we kind of have to look around and make sure that's possible. So the three could eat the two, and it would allow us to move an animal one to two spaces. Um, or, 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 the lion could eat the gator. Oh, sorry, the tiger, excuse me. On your next turn, the animal must move two spaces to eat. So if the if the lion ate the tiger, we can then, oh no, but it's the lion's power that's gonna trigger. Ooh, oh, well, that's no good. Um, How about, geez, I don't know. Raccoon could eat the bat. Uh, on your next turn, if you need an animal valued exactly one below, then you discard one unstacked animal of your choice. So that might not be a... On your next turn, if you need an animal... Oh, we're back to the exactly one level before. Well, the 14 could eat the 13. Well, let's try that. The raccoon is going to eat the bat. Now, on your next turn, if you eat an animal valued exactly one below, then we discard one unstacked animal of our choice. So... If this lion eats the gator, before we trigger the lion's power, we're going to trigger this one, the unstacked animal, and look for one that's going to be very difficult to get somewhere else. Uh, perhaps the polar bear. So let us discard the polar bear. He is out of the game. Now we can trigger the, uh, the lion's power. On your next turn, the animal must eat an animal valued exactly one less instead of one to three less. Did I just mess us up here? Uh-oh. Oh, good. The 11 can eat the 10. The 3 can eat the 2. So if we do the mouse eating the spider, move one animal one to two spaces. We can then move the, the tiger up near the lion. So why don't we do that? We're going to have the mouse eat the spider and then move an one animal one to two spaces. Let's move the tiger up to the lion. And now we're back to kind of having free reign of what we want to do here. Uh, the plant has no ability, but it can't eat anything. So no big deal there. Uh, if the fox eats the snake on our next turn, the animal must move diagonally one space to eat. So that does not help us. <laughs> uh, so that doesn't do a whole lot at all. But if the wolf eats the lynx, it would then move one space, so it would move back down, which might help us. Let's do that. The wolf is going to eat the link. Oh, and I should mention, it's three stacks of cards left or less to win the game or you lose. I've never gotten it below three stacks. I've never gotten a two stack or, or one stack, uh, two stacks or one stack. But anyways, uh, so he's going to move his one space down to here. As far as I know, that's not an option. Uh, we can have this fox eat the 
no that doesn't work again okay so if we have the ant eat the plant <laughs> we get to move animal one animal one to three spaces which means we can move the rat one space over and then he can eat the lizard and our power is move one animal two spaces so so that is interesting so if we move this mouse one two spaces it can now eat the ant and we can move an animal one to two spaces so uh, I don't want to jinx anything here. We want to move an animal for sure. So we want to move. Oh, I know somebody out there is watching this and screaming what the right moves are. If you happen to know, feel free to shout out and chat. <laughs> um, so the, the raccoon. We have to move an animal one to two spaces. We don't have a choice there. So why don't I move this? Um mouse two spaces no that doesn't help either does it uh eight. Oh, if you move the raccoon oops i didn't mean to grab it that quickly if we move the raccoon stack two spaces he can then eat the rat sorry forgot the name there um on your next turn if you need animal value exactly one below we can discard an unstacked one I don't think I have any opportunities to do that. Um, however, I think what we're going to have to do is use our whale card to move one animal to any other space. So we'll flip that one over. We're going to move this raccoon to here. And then we're going to let the raccoon eat the snake. And on our next turn, if we eat an animal valued exactly one below, we can discard one unstacked. So the fox is then going to eat our friend, and we'll do that effect in a second. Uh, do we have any unstacked? That has four. That has one, but we can eat that. That's not unstacked. So it's only this one that we can move, which does us nothing. So it says we can, but but we're not doing that. So now the animal must move diagonally one space to eat and i think we're boofed however i do have my one last um oop, my one last get out of jail free move an animal one space to eat but it can eat any animal of a smaller value so so this guy's going to be the problem isn't it um, if we move this wolf, oh no, he wants to move diagonally to eat. So if we move the wolf here using our get out of jail free card and we animal must move diagonally, the tiger can then eat the, I, I missed what that was. Oh, well, uh, on your next turn, the animal must move two spaces to eat. So, uh oh. <laughs> Um, can we do, no, that doesn't work. Oh, I can, no, yes. I can move that whole stack, one, two. Oh no, I need two space. So he has to eat on the second move. Oh no. And we can't move diagonally, one, two. Does that work? That doesn't work. One, two only gets us there. That's it. I think we're done because I can't make that power happen. On your next turn, the animal must move diagonally one space to eat. Oh no, that wasn't it. The animal must move two spaces to eat. I don't have that capability. Uh oh. And we have four stacks, so we lost. Not happy with that. But we lost and there's not a lot I can do, but what we can do when we lose is flip the table. So join me in the fun of flipping the table. Here we go. Oh, well, it just kind of fell. It didn't flip. Even the table flip was sad in this game. Boo. 
Anyhow, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that quick stream today. Um, we will play some more Four Tales coming up now that we're on to our next chapter. Or no, we're not. We failed the first chapter, but we can finish it off. And definitely some more tabletop sim games coming up. I appreciate you joining me. Please uh, follow if you can and uh, keep your eye on the schedule for upcoming streams. And we will see you again pretty soon.